Hi, my name is Joseph Hammond. I'm a professional illustrator, and in this video, I'm going to be drawing a fox. I'm going to jump right in, and uh, we're going to talk about the materials that I used. And the paper I used was Clairefontaine Pastel Matte in a dark gray. And the pencils I used were Carbo Othello uh, Pastel Pencils and Derwent uh, Pastel Pencils. Okay, I'm going to go over a few of the voc vocabularies that I use uh, in this uh, video, and that's going to be uh, values. Okay, the values are your darks and your lights. Okay, you have a black and you have a white, and you mix those two together and you get a middle gray. And everything in, in between is your gray scale. Okay, if you're interested in this, uh, you can look it up, uh, just Google uh, artist value scale and they'll talk a little bit more, you know, about it. Okay, and also now uh, temperature. A temperature is your color, okay? Uh, when you're drawing, uh, I usually think of it as something being warmer than this or cooler than this, okay? And so when I talk about temperature, I'm, I'm talking about the, uh, how warm it is or how cool it is, okay? Uh, now, edges. Edges, it's, uh, you know, sort of self-explanatory there. It's like the edge of his face or there's, in, you know, inside edges. Uh, now, you either have a hard edge or you have a soft edge or somewhere, you know, in between. Okay, and uh, in this case here, it's going to be mostly soft edges. Probably about 99% soft edges, maybe 1% hard edges. The hard edges is going to be around his eyes. Uh, around his nose and uh, around his uh, uh, lips. Okay, so remember that uh, all fur is always very soft edged. Okay? Hair is the same thing. Now, how to draw an eye? Okay, so it's pretty much the same as everything else. You start out with the dark, you go to your mil middle values, then you go to your light values, and then your highlights. Uh, in this case here, I went to the highlights a little earlier because I wanted to preserve the, that really, uh, the white. Because uh, the eyes are going to be my focal point on this piece. And I wanted the uh, highlights to stand out. Okay. And so uh, I went in there. And uh, now when you think about the eye as being a marble, okay, it's a round little sphere. And uh, the light is going to be coming from the top left and it's uh, hitting uh, the eye where you see where the highlights are. But the lightest part of the eye, other than the highlight, is going to be at the opposite side of the eye. Wherever the highlight is, the opposite side is going to be light. Around the highlight, it's going to be dark. Okay? The reason why that happens is the light refracts through the eyeball, it, uh, like a marble. If you hold a mar marble up to the light, you'll see that it's not the lightest right around where the highlight is, but it's the lightest on the opposite side because the light is being refracted through. Okay, so now I also look at, uh, you know, the eyeball, the uh, pupil. And the pupil is not a round shape within a round shape. Okay, I look at it differently. I look at it, the sh whole shape as, you know, one piece. The shadow shape that goes up and around, remember, all your shadows will wrap around the form. That tells me that that object is round. If I drew the shadow straight across, that would tell me that the eyeball is a flat disc, right? It's not a flat disc, it's a round shape. So it goes up and around to the pupil, goes back down around the pupil, and then back around like an ellipse around the form of the eyeball and down that becomes one shape okay rather than three different shapes okay simplify your shapes like that and i think they'll become much more interesting shapes okay so now i wanted to talk about overlapping edges okay uh, uh like on the around the eye there and down below the eye there if i had drawn you know, the uh, fur uh, around the eye and just stop. Now, it is a hard edge. That is, a, you know, the, one of the hardest edges that you're going to have in the whole piece is 
that uh, eyelid that's on the bottom there. But you still have to overlap the edges. Even your hardest hard edge is going to be softened to the point by overlapping. If you don't overlap your edges, you're going to get hard edges everywhere, like the fur, for instance. If you just butt the edges up next to each other and then start another shape, uh, they're going to be hard edges, and then you, it's going to be coming out looking more like a paint by number. You know how you have the you paint one shape and then you go and paint another shape right next to it, and that's not what you want, right? You want the whole painting to look like it's one piece. You want the values and you want the temperature and the colors to flow together. You know, you don't want uh, segmented. Because uh, yeah, I uh, you know, learned this a long time ago when I would look at my drawings and paintings and, oh, man, this is just not looking good. You know, it's just, it's really stiff and it's uh, disjointed. And, uh, you know, I uh, finally figured out that it's it's because my edges are, are uh not being overlapped okay so now like i said before i want the uh, eyes to be my focal point and so i'm going to have most of the details right around the eye level and also around the snout and uh, that's the area that i want the people to look at uh, i'm not so interested in the people looking at the top of his head you know if I had the strongest value changes at the back of his head, behind his ears there, if I had the strongest value changes between the background and the uh, uh, hair, that, that's what, that would be popping forward. I would be telling the viewers that the back of his head is at the same level as his snout is, right? And that, that would create a complete flat object. But no, I don't want that, right? I want that to... Uh, go back in space, and uh, you know the other thing to come forward. Now, let me tell you how to, we're gonna be drawing the fur here, right? Because this, this piece is gonna be probably, you know, it's gonna be almost all about fur, because uh, he's got a lot of fur. And so what I do here is I uh, lay down my darks, I put in my medium, uh, middle values, and then I go back in with my light values on the fur. And then I soften it up, okay? And I, in this case here, I use a, uh, there we go, right there. That's a watercolor brush. It's called a watercolor mop. Uh, you don't have to use that. You can use anything that has a soft, soft brush. I mean, a makeup brush, uh, that'll probably work. Uh, don't buy, go out and buy an expensive watercolor brush because it's not gonna work any better than a cheap one, right? And watercolor brushes can be very expensive. So that's what uh, you need to do because every time you finish your dark, middle value, your light, you're going to soften that up. You're not going to rub it out. You can you soften it up. So everything that you've done uh, so far still comes through because that's what you want it to look like, a layered effect. You want it to look like there's a lot of fur there. But if you rub it out you know, completely, you're just gonna get a solid uh, color and then you have to draw on top of that. But to get, I think, a much fuller look, you just layer over and over to the point where I do it maybe six, seven times. And the videos, I probably only show you how, you know, I'm doing it maybe two, three times because you, know, you don't wanna watch me do it seven times. So that's what I'm doing here. Now, one thing you might be thinking, how do I know which direction the fur is going to be going. Because even the dark fur, you know, when you're layering your dark in, it has to be going in the direction that the fur is going to be going. And then the middle value is the same thing, and then your life value is the same. You can't have, like, uh, you know, the fur at the top of the head going, uh, you know, completely sideways, right? The way you figure that out is, okay, think of the head as a clock, okay? At the top, it's going to be 12, at the right, it's going to be, you know, three. At the bottom jaw, it's going to be six. And the left eye, it's going to be nine. Okay, just like a clock, right? And that's the direction that your fur will go. Uh, up on the top of the head, it's going straight up. Then it starts to go down to one o'clock, then to two o'clock. And at the eye, it's going to straight out to three. Then it, 
Then it, going around the head, it starts going down to four, then to five, and at the end of the jaw, it's six. And same thing all the way around. Um, it sort of simplifies it, makes it easier. Now, you don't want to have it like matchsticks laying down and it's all going exactly, you know, the way the hands on a clock goes, right? Some of them cross each other. Some may go over a little bit off to one, you know, one o'clock or, you know, uh, 11 o'clock. But, you know, it's going in the basic direction, right? Because this is a wild animal. It's a natural thing. It does not have you know, uh, even laying things like a, you know, man-made stuff does. Okay, so uh, now we're going to be going over like the values like I was talking a little bit, a little while ago. And um, what it is, is it's called atmospheric perspective. Okay, atmospheric perspective is not like uh, linear perspective. A linear perspective is where you have a horizon line, you have a vanishing point, and all your lines go to that vanishing point, and that creates the perspective that you want. Uh, this is going to be atmospheric perspective. We're going to be using the atmosphere. That means the like the water in the air to create distance. Okay, things that even uh, something as close as uh, you know a fox's head. I don't know what that be. Probably maybe a foot long. Even that will be more faded and more muted uh, and closer in value to the background at the back of his head than at the end of his snout. Okay, at the end of his snout, it's going to be my darkest dark and my lightest light. And uh, maybe I have a touch of a highlight on his, uh, n- on his nose. That p- will pop it forward. That's how you push and you pull. Okay. Uh, you push things back by using the atmosphere, you know, like Leonardo da Vinci used it. Uh, if you look at his paintings, uh, everything in the background there would be much cooler and more faded in value, right? Closer together. Uh, he'll use things that, uh, that he wants you to look at to be come forward and uh, to have the strongest value changes. And... Uh, so that's what uh, atmospheric perspective is, and that's what you're doing here. Okay, you're making everything go back, and you're pulling things forward. You can use your temperature. Warmer temperatures come forward. Cooler temperatures go back. Okay, so now uh, we're gonna you know talk about uh, regular and irregular. Okay. That uh, to create uh, something interesting, it has to be irregular. In this case, being irregular is good. Being regular is bad. Okay? Uh, You want things, you don't want everything to be the same. Like your shapes, for instance. You never want your shapes to be parallel. Okay? You want going to be thicker and then thinner. Okay? Thicker and thinner. Okay? Uh, So you want... Also, your values, you want the values to go from black to lighter. You know, it could be lighter, like a lighter black, but, you know, you want to flex your values. You want to flex your temperatures, okay? That means the temperatures change. You don't have the same color everywhere, okay? Let's think of a uh, jungle, for instance. If you're doing a drawing, a painting of a jungle, uh, and you have... Um, obviously, the jungle is going to be mostly green, right? But does that mean you use one green? Everything is the same green? Well, that would be a pretty boring jungle, right? So you use a green that maybe has some more yellow in it. Some of the green will have some more blues in it. Some of the green will have more red in it. You know, and then you also vary the values of your jungle. You know, some areas are going to be lighter, some areas are going to be darker. That's what you want to do within your painting. You don't want to be the same. Now, I'm drawing the edge of his face here, you know, the jaw there, right? And it, that's kind of a good example. If you're uh, going to make it more boring, you're going to have it like a sawtooth, right? You know, in and out, in and out, in and out, right? That's boring. You want to have it, you know, in, out, and then in, 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 out, right? Like that. 
that makes it more exciting. In other words, there's going to be some gaps here. There's going to be a wider gap there. One's going to be longer here. You know, some of the gaps are going to go up farther and everything is going to be varied. Okay, nothing is the same. Uh, even your, uh, if you're doing, this is a value drawing, okay? So there's going to be no lines showing on this piece. Uh, if you were doing a line drawing, which, uh, you know, you would show the lines to hold the edges, uh, those lines will have to be beautiful too. Even that, I mean, you may think that's getting really picky. Well, you have to go beautiful everywhere and make it interesting everywhere. You have to have good qual line quality and even the lines will be beautiful. And uh, you know, if, if you make try to make everything beautiful, you're probably gonna end up with a beautiful drawing, okay? Now, why do I use, uh, why do I hold the pencil the way I hold the pencil? Two reasons. One reason, so I can get a much lighter touch, okay? Uh, we want to have a very light touch because that's what we're doing is layering over the top. You don't want to come and get a real dark, uh, heavy-handed look, right? This is going to be a soft, uh, softer look that you want. And you're going to be layering over the top of each other. That's one reason. The other reason is if you hold your pencil within your thumb and your forefinger, you're going to end up with, uh, you can draw with your whole arm, okay, all the way from your shoulder down to your fingers. And you create, that's how you create beautiful line quality is by, you know, manipulating your uh, pencil, you know, throughout from your shoulders to your elbow, to your wrist and your fingers. If you're holding it like a pencil, you're gonna be able to move that pencil about this, you know, maybe an inch, maybe an inch and a half, you know, it's gonna, you're gonna end up with little tiny jagged lines and uh, it, it just doesn't look good, right? So this is probably gonna be the hardest thing you're gonna be doing is to switch, you know, yourself to be able to use, hold the pencil in that way. But once you get used to it, it's, uh, you know, it feels weird to do it any other way, okay? So like I, we were saying before, we're, uh, you know, putting in, uh, making sure everything is irregular and not regular. And uh, let me talk a little bit about the positive and negative shapes there. I put in, uh, I see the darks like in the uh, fur there along his uh, side of his cheek there. Those, the dark areas are going to be my negative space. And the light areas are going to be my positive space. Okay. And I think in another video, I also use the analogy of a English muffin, okay? The top of the English muffin is going to be my positive shapes and all the little nooks and crannies and stuff are gonna be my negative shapes, okay? Uh, and that, when someone says, okay, uh, you know, uh, make your negative shapes look more prominent or something, that's what they're talking about, you know, make your negative shapes there stick out more, okay? so. I wanted uh, everybody to know that you look at your negative and positive shapes. And uh, in this case here, I want my negative shapes to be covered, you know, sort of covered over the top. So it looks like it's uh, actually a shadow shapes down below. And that's what's causing that darkness. It's not actually a, you know, dark stripe, right? That he has on him. So here I'm drawing, gonna draw the mouth. Uh, like I said earlier, uh, I wanted the emphasis to be on his eyes and not really on his mouth because, you know, he, he's got a friendly little mouth. I mean, his mouth isn't like, you know, I'm going to eat you kind of mouth like uh, the tiger I did. You know, uh, that I emphasized the mouth. That was you know, how to draw a tiger if you want to look at that one. <laughs> and uh, so uh, I emphasized the mouth on that piece. This piece, I'm going to be emphasizing the eyes because he's just got a friendly little mouth. Now, uh, I, so I'm not gonna put any real highlights in there. Even the teeth, I have to watch out what the uh, values of the teeth are gonna be. Because, you know, his jaw is hinged, right? It's on a hinge. And so when he opens it up like that, it drops down and away from me. It's not at the same level 
as his uh, snout is. So I have to lower the value of the teeth, otherwise the teeth are gonna be coming popping out. You always look at it, and if it looks, if you see it and it says, you think, oh wow, the teeth are popping out, lower the values, make it a little bit darker, and it'll stay back, okay? Uh, you can use a, a mirror, like a handheld mirror, that's very important. It'll tell you all the problems that you're having within the piece, whether it's the drawing problems or value drawings. If you can't see a value shape very well, squint your eyes, okay? Squint your eyes and look at it, and it'll, it'll make it so it simplifies all your shapes. Uh, you get rid of all the detail, and you can see all your value shapes, okay? So now remember I talked about the mother color. You see where um, I put in that terracotta red back there and uh, over the top of my darks, okay? And remember, you're layering all these colors. And uh, I wanted to talk about here. You see the sort of like the dark stripes that are on his chest there? They're not really dark stripes, but they're breaks within the fur. Uh, his fur on top of his head is, you know, he's got prettier fur on top of his head, but the rest of his body is sort of kind of uh, matted looking and, you know, much more wild, right? So that's what that is down there. But what you use that for is a good tool that you can use it to wrap the form. You can wrap around the form and it goes all the way around the body. Always think of the, uh, you know, as a fox or the, whatever you're drawing as having uh, another part of the body that you don't see, okay? I look at this and I don't think, oh, well, you know, he doesn't have his back of the head. He doesn't have a back of the neck because I can't see it. Well, it's there. So, you know, you think of it as having a back of the neck. You think of it as having a side of the face and then all the way around the other side of the body and coming back around. And you can use that, those dark areas there as going around the form. And it goes around, up, around, behind the ears and... You think of it as keep on going and back around, and that will create volume. If you can think of this object as having three dimensions versus only two dimensions, you'll be able to draw, you know, in a much more realistic three-dimensional, you know, way, rather than thinking, okay, he's a, he's a cardboard cutout, he's flat, you know, that's not the way you want to think because. That's the difference between, you know, your drawn object and a photograph is you're making it into a three dimensions. Even though if it obviously he's going to look flat on a uh, photograph because, you know, that's what photographs do is they make it flat. And uh, so you're, you're going to have to do as the artist, you're going to have to change that and you have to create the, the dimensions. Okay, now I drew in the lights on his right hand side because remember he's being lit from the top left, I'm sorry, the light on the left hand side. And uh, that is to hold that edge. In this uh, drawing here, I'm not looking to lose any edges. Okay, uh, I drew that, uh, the old man one, you know, how to draw an old man in pastels. And uh, that one there was, I wanted to lose a lot of edges. Okay, uh, most of my edges were lost in the, that one. This one here, you're going to be able to see all the edges, even though the edges are soft. Okay, so I needed uh, something to hold that left-hand side in, so I lightened it up a little bit, like the light is hitting it, and plus I think it looks kind of neat. And and uh, I wanted you also to look, not so much here, but at the, when, I, when I got the finished piece, and how I flex the values there at a certain point, it's lighter, and then it gradually gets darker as it's going away from me, okay? So look at that uh, in the finished piece. Now, here's the finished piece. See how it's lighter and then it gets darker? See how the fur is pretty much very soft, right? I want that soft. I want it to look like he was in the morning fog and uh, you see the guy in, uh, you know, uh, in the forest. So anyhow, uh, if you have any questions about the drawing, just uh, go down in the comments and ask me, and I'll be glad to answer anything uh, you have, okay? Uh, if you liked the video, please hit the like and subscribe. I really need the help. Uh, if I'm going to keep doing this, I need more subscribers and, and more likes. Uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.